Oh, hi. Hi, hi Kia. Nice How's it to going? see you. Nice yeah, to really see you. Well. Really well. Oh, look at your amazing office there. Thank you. It's a little <laughs> busy. It. It's like you, my, my life. <laughs> you got it. And you're loving the post-its like me. So that's great. Yeah, post-its. <laughs> I love post-its. I literally tried to take them all off my computer to come on live. I was like, oh, my God, let me take these off. <laughs> so I, I don't know where I just put them, but I put them somewhere under here. But, yeah, sticky notes for everything. Oh, I love it. And um, so I'm hoping that the sound and the connection and everything is, is going okay. So if anybody yeah. um, just, you can comment if you need us to, to check the connection or the sound or anything, but yeah, let's just uh, go ahead and chat. So yeah. um, I thought first um, I'd um, introduce myself because people might not know who I am. So mm -hmm. I'm Jessie and I'm the social media coordinator for Action on Postpartum Psychosis. And um, I'm also a mother and I have lived experience myself of postpartum psychosis. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really delighted to be joined by you, Nakia. So you're Nakia Stevens and you're yes. a screenwriter and um, that's a, the US program Baby Blue, which is going to be shown um, today on BET Her TV at 9 p.m. Pacific mm -hmm. time in the US. Um, and then for those of us that are in the UK, um, we can watch it on BET, which is, um, and I'll send, I'll put up a post, which give you the link to this. So it's on Sky 195, Virgin 184 and Freesat 140. Nice. So yeah. first of all, I was wondering if you could tell us a bit about you and a bit about the program. Yeah, so I'm Nakia Stevens. I am a screenwriter and founder of the screenwriting label, Damn Right Originals. Um, and I, as a writer, was commissioned to um, be a part of the BT Her, um, it's called The Couch series, where they wanted to focus stories on mental health. And so um, just knowing that they wanted to focus on mental health, I, I chose to write about um, postpartum depression um, originally my thought was postpartum depression and because I was just very, it's just terrified at the fact that, um, you know, black maternal health is, is just a, a huge topic that we need to discuss, um, cause we have not been getting the help that we need as black women. And so I really wanted to focus there. And then it wasn't until I got deeper into like my studies and, in, um, interviewing people about postpartum depression that I find out that. Um, postpartum depression can lead to post, you know, it can, it's stages and it can go to postpartum psychosis. And I was like, what? And so I started to read more about that. And so I wanted to, to focus and talk about both of them. So that's great. Yeah. And um, so you're saying that you didn't know about postpartum psychosis before you started writing. No, I just knew um, about postpartum depression. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you, um, do your research to find out more about postnatal depression and postpartum psychosis? So I um, did a couple of different things. Of course, I read articles, um, certified medical articles, um, medical papers and journals from doctors who have written about it. Um, I interviewed a few people who had just given birth and who had experienced postpartum depression. Um, I watched a couple people, uh, they've documented their experience on like YouTube and things of that nature. So I watched those and I took notes from there. Um, and so like, that's where I just reading and watching and talking to people is where I learned that, you know, there's postpartum depression. And then if untreated, you know, it could, it could um, develop into postpartum psychosis. And so I was just very interested and concerned in, you know, why I want more people to know about, you know, postpartum depression and postpartum psychosis and how to assist their you know family members or loved ones who's going through it how to spot it within yourself if you feel you know a little off or if you you know how to ask for help things of that nature so that's basically what i wanted to do and so those are some of the things that i did to make sure that i researched thoroughly and so tell us about baby blue yeah baby blue is um it focuses on um a couple and they just gave birth to a newborn and um so before, just a little care, uh, background on the main character. She, uh, she's a hard worker. She's a very professional, she's a professional woman. So she finally decided to have a child. 
I'm a little late in life too. So she's already has her life going at this point. So she has a child and she just starts to just, she just doesn't really adjust too well so soon, but she doesn't accept, she doesn't want to accept that because she's a very determined person. She's a hard worker. She considers herself strong and um, she doesn't want to accept the fact that this, she might need help. So she like just tries to mask that she's not okay. Um, and she tries to do what she can, you know, and when people want to help her, she just, she kind of gets offended. She feels like it's condescending. So she just goes through all of these different emotions and, you know, it just takes something drastic for her family and herself to realize like, okay, it's okay for me to get help. It's okay for me to, um, accept, you know, assistance from my loved ones. Oh, that's such important messages. Yeah. And so in writing, uh, writing the script for the program, mm -hmm. was there anything that surprised you? Um, no, not necessarily writing the script, but like, like I said, what surprised me the most was postpartum psychosis. Like I just did not know about it at all. And I knew that I wasn't alone. I'm like, I, if I, you know, don't know about this, it has to be other people who don't know about this. And it's terrifying, especially as a black woman, because black women have this, I think I, when we spoke, I was telling you we have a trope of a strong black woman. And it's very, it's emotionally and physical, physically harmful um, because it just, it's, it's kind of a burden put on us to where we just are not looked at as people who need help. Even if we internalize it, we feel like we don't need help and we can carry all of these things ourselves. And so knowing that there's something out there that exists called postpartum psychosis and many people don't know about it is terrifying because we already don't get the help we need. Um, so to know that th there's something that if this stage of postpartum depression is not um, treated, it can you know develop into this, this next thing. So um that was surprising that I, I will keep saying that that was like the most surprising thing i'm just reading more and i'm like wow you know and i'm reading people's stories and i'm like wow i had no idea so definitely want to share that that's yeah it's so important and um so for me so as i said my um i had postpartum psychosis too and it came completely out of the blue and i'd never heard of it before never mm. had any mental health problems previously and you know eight days after I had my baby I just went into this very strange um kind of mania and couldn't sleep mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um and yeah so I know like many women that it's something that that does happen out of the blue and they don't know how to because they haven't heard about it or the people yeah. around them haven't heard of it I don't know how to get the right help, which is mm -hmm. so important. Yeah, so it's it brilliant. A stigma, probably because you don't want to complain because it's like you're you're supposed to be happy. That's what people think you're supposed to be happy. You just had a baby. Like, what's wrong? Um, so, or or they brush it off. Like, I think there's a part in the script which is not giving away too much, but somebody just tells you, "Oh, you're tired. Go take a nap." You know, like in so then you feel like you don't even want to speak up anymore because when you do. It's go take a nap, just lie down, just drink some water, just breathe. And it's deeper than that. So, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so during the writing process, I mentioned that you spoke to black women who've experienced maternal mental health issues and that you watched films and you read stories about women who've experienced postpartum psychosis. So how is that helpful for you for the writing process? It just helped me to... Um, have all of these different accounts of experiences with postpartum depression or postpartum psychosis um, so that I can just be authentic to the story. Um, Cause I rather not, I feel like if you, just in writing in general, I always try to include the community in which I'm writing about if it's, some, if it's a community outside of myself. So um, for uh, maternal mental health, obviously I'm, I don't have children yet. And I'm having experience, um, experience postpartum depression or postpartum psychosis. So I try to always include the communities in which it's affecting so that I'm not making a caricature of what I think this is like. And I'm just more so having a reflection of what it's like. Um, so, yeah. So, I, I mean, it was very helpful just to, to infuse some of those experiences into my characters um, just to, to keep it authentic. And what do you hope that the impact of the program will be? 
Um, I hope that more people are able to, one, recognize signs within their loved ones that something is not okay. Um, you know, and then also for women, black women who are maybe experiencing some of these symptoms can get help sooner and know that it's, it, it's fine. It's okay. Like many women experience this, they're not alone. There are resources. So that's my main thing. It's just like to, I don't want it to be a stigma. I want it to be something that it's more talked about and people feel more comfortable getting help. Yeah. We've actually got a comment here from um, uh, Harmony Sleep Coach, and she says, thank you for exploring this as a barrier exists as black women aren't portrayed as crying. Um, so thank mm -hmm. you so much for your comment. Yeah, there. thank you. Yeah. And um, what would you most like to change in the future for women and families who are affected by postnatal depression and by postpartum psychosis? I want um, first, like, just to pinpoint on Black women because we are the least, like, the group that's least likely to get the help that we need. So I want um, outside of Black women just feeling comfortable to speak up. I want healthcare professionals to do their part because a lot of times we're misdiagnosed. A lot of times our complaints about our body or our mental health are brushed aside, and so um, it's terrifying and it's unfortunate. And that needs to change. So it starts there. It starts with listening to Black women. Um, it starts with assisting Black women and amplifying the voices of Black women, you know? So um, that's what I hope to change. And then also, obviously, I want Black women to feel more comfortable um, saying, like, this is what I'm experiencing. Yeah. yeah. So what? I do have a quick question for you. Oh, yeah, please. Um, I, I want to know a little bit about, you know, what you all are doing as far as um, helping that in that, in that, you know, just with the knowledge of like black women are not getting as much attention that we need and deserve in the mental and in medical space. Um, what is, what are you all doing to help that? What research are you all doing? What programs are you all doing? Yeah. So, um, it's such an important topic and it, as a charity, Action and Postpartum Psychosis has been um, doing some uh, big pieces of research into this. So working mm -hmm. with women who um, are black, Asian and from minority ethnic groups to, um, to interview them, to understand what their experiences have been like. And mm -hmm. so we've been, um, that's been commissioned and we've been, um, employing women as well mm -hmm. within the um, the charity who are um, black asian minority ethnic as, uh, women as well so that we can have that embedded within within the charity um, mm -hmm. and have those women's voices heard so um i'm sure you probably know but there's a, an incredible inspiring campaign at the moment called five times more so this mm -hmm. is where um and actually the campaign I just saw today has been um, featured in Vogue magazine. Oh, um, wow. So, okay. Which is fantastic. Uh, but a really inspiring group of, of mothers, of women who, um, who are um, campaigning to, to show that, um, that black women are five times more likely to die in pregnancy, in mm. childbirth, and yeah. the time after birth and it's shocking it's absolutely yeah. shocking mm -hmm. horrific um statistics and you know something has to be done about this it's got to be the research we've got to be sharing women's voices and making them heard yeah and the the um so we we are using our campaigning voice as a charity to to make sure that women's voices are heard yeah. The research is there to back it up, to, to know where that action needs to be, to be taking place mm -hmm. and, and, you know, campaigning and making sure that that, that change is, is made in the real world. So yeah. it's, it's something that is, is a priority for the charity at the moment and Good. will continue to be. And, and I'm just so glad that the women, are, the women who've come before me have been raising up and you know sharing their voices and saying you know this 
stigma of postpartum psychosis but like we're going to talk about it we we don't you know it is a, a life-threatening illness and we we don't think that you know that this this should be happening so and mm-hmm. if if it is the case that that black women are more likely to be affected than by this then we need to know and we need to do something about it so yeah yeah good good to hear but there's so much there's just a huge way to go still a huge way to go but um yeah oh somebody said thanks for writing this we have no idea how to watch it in europe can you say the channels again well so and also 9 p.m is um est i know it's confusing because i'm in pst which is los angeles um so for me what's that three hours five six seven eight nine so six six p.m for me pst 9 p.m est and i have no idea what that is i was trying to work out i think it's something like five o'clock in the morning or maybe even earlier so (laughs) so um yeah so it's definitely something that i mean if people can and we do have a lot of followers who are um who are in the u.s and will be able to catch it um but yeah i think in terms of for catch up we'll we'll find the links and we'll make sure that people can can hear this story because it's it's so important um thank you yeah yeah so uh so amy photos we will let you know and we'll share at the end of this as well i'll I'll read out again the channels for the uk and so uh, yeah i i I guess i'm interested to know a bit more about the um the story and the um how that then connects with the the other programs that are going on um bet her because you mentioned that it's part of a, a series yeah yeah, so it's a series, um, and the focus is mental health. That's like the, the blanket of like what all the stories should be focused on. And so mine was postpartum depression and postpartum psychosis. And then we have one that focuses on schizophrenia. Um, one is a bipolar disorder. And I think it was just three. Yeah, so I think those are the, the three that they chose to talk about, that the writers, we all chose to talk about this go around. I'm sure that they're will be future episodes in the future with different focuses so yeah and um is there anything that i haven't asked you about that you'd like to talk about who you'd like to mention um i also have another film coming out tonight (laughs) it's also (laughs) about um black parenthood it's not focusing on um uh, postpartum depression or psychosis but it is it does focus on black parents and the anxiety that comes with um, giving birth to black children in America um, so that's on Aspire TV and will also be on YouTube so if everyone follows me at Screenwrite Her um, I'll post everything and then you'll be able to watch that too so that's what I want to share and then also you guys can follow Dan Wright Originals um, to keep up with what we're doing we actually shot a film. Oh, I forgot to tell you that when we spoke before and when I was yes. telling you that I had been, visited London a couple of times. Oh, yeah. We shot a film in 2018 um, in London and in Paris. So it's, it was pretty cool. <laughs> so oh, that's, on our, that's on our YouTube, too. So if everybody <laughs> follows Damn Right Originals, then you'll be able to see all of our work. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, well, I'll also make sure that I share links as well. So, um, Thank you. yeah, I'll repost stuff. Um, yeah, I've got another comment here that, um, that I'll read out. So it's from anatomical pins and it says, it's crazy that more than one in 10 women experience this and it's rarely spoken about. So thank you for doing this. And um, so I think the one in 10, um, refers to, um, mothers who, um, experience maternal mental health problems after they mm-hmm. have children. Um, yeah. Yeah. Which you're right. One in 10 it's, it's, um, it is crazy and it is surprising and shocking. Um, yeah. So for postpartum psychosis, it's around one to two in a thousand births and the women will be experiencing postpartum psychosis. And um, I don't have the statistic to hand for postnatal depression, but if you go and have a look on our website, you'll be able to find yeah. the statistics too. But yeah, it's, it's yeah. It's shocking. It's terrifying. Yeah. 
Um, so I just wanted to say a huge thank you, Nakia, for having this chat with me and for all of the work that you're doing. It's, um, it's so inspiring and I really can't thank wait you. to see the programme as it airs. Hey. <laughs> Um, so I'll just tell everyone again like uh, about the program. So, um, so Nakia is um, the screenwriter of the US program Baby Blue, which will be shown today on BET Her TV, which is at 9 p.m., which is EST, is yes. that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> in the USA. Um, so for those of us that are in the UK, um, you can watch um, BET, which is on Sky 195, on Virgin 184, and Freesat 140. But I've actually put in our Instagram, um, I've got a photo of Nakia, and if you have a look at that, it's got the, um, the channels and things there, so you can find it easily. And... Um, if you think that a, a new mum seems strange, then seek urgent help. So postpartum psychosis is a life-threatening mental health emergency. Um, and if you're in the UK, you should call your doctor or call 111 um, for a same-day appointment or go to A&E. And don't have any hesitation about going to A&E or if you need to, call 999. So I guess in the States, that would be ER. Is that right? Yeah. The emergency yeah. room? Emergency room. Like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the ER. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, and so with the right help, ideally in what's called a mother and baby unit, um, the women will recover. And there's a really good prognosis. Um, so the kind of symptoms that you might see, so it's usually within the first two weeks after having a baby, um, things like confusion, racing thoughts, um, feeling unusually elated, frightened or tearful, or not able to sleep, um, beliefs that are unusual or concerning to others, or hearing and sensing things that others can't. Um, so it's a difficult process to get through, but you will get there. Um, and you're not alone. Action on postpartum psychosis has a really fantastic community of women um, who, um, with experience like me, who've had experience of postpartum psychosis um, and experts that are here to help. And for those of you watching, if you need any help or information, then do come to us um, and you can meet some others as well. Yeah, so thank great. you so much again, Nakia. Thank you. Okay, we'll take care. Bye. Bye.